Hello, everybody. Guess what? My birthday's on Friday. Hooray! Earlier this month, I asked my followers on Tumblr what topics they'd like me to cover for my birthday, because what better way to celebrate your birthday than by doing things for other people? Actually, there's probably a lot of other better things to do on your birthday. So today I'm covering one of those requested topics, and that is book titles. So first things first, let's take this piece of shit off. You're ruining my hair. All right then, you wrote a book, now you gotta name it. Here's how to do it. The thing about book titles is they either come super easily or they're a pain in the ass to figure out. If you're dealing with the first situation, then congratulations. I hate you. But if you're in the latter category, don't fret. Jenna's here to wash away your tears. The first thing to remember is that you don't need to title your manuscript right at the start. If all you have is an outline and a few chapters, slow your roll. There's a really good chance that the perfect title will just come to you at some point in the writing process. You've got plenty of time to figure it out. But if your book is done and you still got nothing, don't panic. We can fix this. I'm going to tell you six steps that you'll want to implement when naming your novel. Step number one, look for keywords and themes. All novels have words that serve a significant purpose to the story. They could be the names of characters or cities or species. They could be the powers the characters possess or the villains they fight. In Eve the Awakening, the most obvious keywords were Eve, Chimera, New Human, Interloper, Gift, Melt, and Blood. Find those keywords and write them down. Sometimes the keywords are going to be really easy to find. Take, for example, The Hunger Games. And other times it's gonna require a little bit of digging. Afterward, you're gonna wanna take a look at the themes and symbols in your story. Things that might not necessarily be keywords, but serve a deeper meaning. In Eve the Awakening, there were a lot of color symbols and there was a lot of symbolism regarding waking up from nightmares. Now this whole stuff is a little bit difficult if you're writing in the contemporary genre. It can be kind of hard to find keywords in contemporary stories, so symbols and themes are going to be your best friend. Step number two, take those keywords and symbols and make them into titles. Sometimes it'll be easy. One of your keywords on its own might make the perfect title. Boom, done. Other times it'll take a lot more effort, especially if your keywords are really common, like werewolf or magic. Whether you've got easy words to work with or hard ones, make a list of titles. Even if you think you found the perfect title, make more than one because the next few steps are gonna knock a bunch out of the running. Step number three, eliminate any misleading titles. Eve the Awakening's plotline relies heavily on blood, so it would make sense to have blood somewhere in the title. But a lot of plotlines rely on blood, like murder mysteries or horror stories, and especially vampire novels. When I see blood in a book title, I tend to assume it's about vampires. And since my book has nothing to do with vampires, that's probably not the image I wanna portray. When titling your book, try to take a step back and ask yourself, does this sound right? Even if the keywords are indicative of the plot, you wanna make sure the title creates the right image. Step number four, take the rest of your titles and Google them. This is the step that's gonna break your heart. Seriously, you might cry. Google every title you're left with and see what pops up. If the title is identical to another popular book, movie, video game, whatever, delete it. Say you wanna call your book Frozen, but there just so happens to be a popular movie called Frozen. What are the odds? If you stick to your guns and title that book Frozen, guess what's gonna pop up whenever people Google your book? Let it go. Let it go. No, but seriously, let the title go. You want your book to be as easy to find as possible. When people Google your book, they should see your book. Naming it Frozen or Assassin's Creed or Twilight is just setting yourself up for failure. Now, once you finish the step, you may be left with no titles at all. It happens. This is when you gotta go back to your keywords and fiddle around with them. You can also consider subtitles. Eve is a popular video game, but Eve the Awakening is a book by Jenna Moresi this asshole. On the flip side, after Googling your options, your list might have been narrowed down to one title. If that's the case, hooray, you're done. You've got a book title. But if you've Googled all your titles and you still got a bunch to choose from, you move on to step five, the tiebreaker. There are many ways to break a tie. For starters, you can just look at the options available and choose your favorite. Simple enough. But sometimes you don't have a favorite. Sometimes all the options look perfectly fine and you're just thinking, can someone just choose one for me? Actually, someone can. Why not pull your target audience and check to see which title is most intriguing to them? 
They're the ones who are going to be buying your book after all. You can create a survey and ask them to select the title they'd be most apt to pick up in a bookstore. This is not only a great way to pick your title, it's also a great way to gather data about your audience. Now at this point, you should at least have an idea of what your book title is going to be. This is when we move on to the final step. Consider the series. If your book for sure is a standalone, then hey, you're done. But if you think this book is going to be part of a series, then you need to consider how you're going to proceed with that. There are several different ways to to name a series. Number one, there's the Twilight Method. This is when each book in the series has a completely different name, but the full series is named after the very first book. The nice thing about this method is you don't have to put a ton of thought into coordinating your titles. The negative is, if you're not a household name like Stephanie Meyer, it might make it a little bit harder for readers to track down all the books in your series. Number two, the Divergent Method. This is where all the books in the series get a similar name. The names could rhyme, like Divergent, Insurgent, Allegiant, Detergent. Or they could just have a similar formula, like Shatter Me, Unravel Me, Fracture Me. And number three, the Harry Potter Method. This is where each book in the series has a title and subtitle, or is written in a way that resembles that format. Every Harry Potter book begins with Harry Potter and the blah blah blah. Books named using this format are super easy to search for, but it gives you less room for creativity. Regardless of which method you choose, this is something you gotta consider before you nail down the title for your first book. You don't want to publish it and then think, oh fuck, what am I going to do for the rest of the series? So hey, that's all I got for you today. Remember, if you're just getting started on your manuscript, you don't need a title right now. Give it time, let it come to you. And if you're completely done and still at a loss, these six steps will point you in the right direction. On that note, I have an announcement. In case you've forgotten, my birthday's this week. And you should never forget my birthday. In honor of this, I am hosting an Instagram challenge. To participate, all you have to do is post an image to Instagram that fits the day's theme, and then caption that image with the hashtag #EvePhotoChallenge. This hashtag is super important because without it, I won't see the photo, and I won't know that you participated. This challenge starts today and lasts for one week, and throughout that time, I will be choosing winners at random, and each of them will win a signed copy of this pretty little lady. How many winners will there be? I don't know, maybe one, maybe a hundred. Probably not a hundred, but definitely more than one, so you should enter. Today's theme is to post a selfie with Eve. It can be with a paperback copy, it can be with an ebook copy, whatever. Just do it. Selfie. Follow me on Instagram at Jenna Moresi to see all the details. With that said, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I post new videos on Wednesdays. Eve the Awakening is still available in ebook and paperback on Amazon right now, so check it out. And if you have any questions or if there's something you'd like me to talk about in my next video, be sure to tweet me at Jenna Moresi. Bye. What the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> Birthday. Ah! I'm celebrating by myself.